We've talked before on the show about one of America's most respected and honored authors, Ernest Hemingway. We celebrate Hemingway Days here in Key West every July. Well, during Hemingway's time here in the Keys, he received a cat named Snowball. Now, with paws featuring six toes, Snowball became the first of a long line of cats that has helped make the Hemingway Home and Museum one of the most popular visitor attractions in the state of Florida. In this home, Hemingway lived for almost 10 years. Dave, thank you for being with me this morning. Oh, thank you, Jenna. It's our pleasure to be here. Well, it's my pleasure to have you on the show because I'm fascinated by Ernest Hemingway, as, of course, you're fascinated by him, and so many of our viewers are as well. Let's start by having you talk about some of the history that's happened in this home, Dave. Sure. The house was actually built in 1851 by a gentleman named Asa Tift and he was a very wealthy ship's captain and ship's architect, but also pioneered the ship wrecking and salvaging uh, effort here in Key West. He built the house out of solid limestone rock, and the rock was excavated from the premises itself. He dug down about 14 feet and excavated these 18-inch blocks of limestone and then built the house around this cavity that was produced by the excavation, which means we have the only full basement in the Florida Keys. Mm -hmm. um, Asa Tiff died in 1889, Hemingway was born in 1899, and he bought the house in 1931. Uh, the house had been in disrepair and vacant for over 30, 40 years, and when the Hemingways bought it, there was a dispute over the supposed family members fighting over the estate. Hemingway snapped it up in 1931 for $8,000 in back taxes. Mm -hmm. He and Pauline Hemingway moved in, renovated the home had their two sons grow up there, and today it's a National Historic Landmark, literary landmark, and recognized by the Library of Congress for its importance in U.S. history. Okay, and now in the introduction I mentioned the cat, Snowball. Mm -hmm. That was the first one, and you guys are also known for all these cats that you have running around the place. Yeah, we have what are called the polydactyl, which are six-toed cats, mm -hmm. and they're, they're called mitten cats, Boston cats, uh, English cats. But the polydactyl, it's a recessive gene in the DNA that occurs in all mammals, actually. Even some people are born with an extra finger. They normally clip it at birth these days. But the folklore about the polydactyl cats is what really drove Hemingway's um, interest in the cats themselves. Long before he was a story writer, as a boy, he was a storyteller. Mm -hmm. And he loved a good story, obviously. Well, he heard this folklore legend about these polydactyl, these six-toed cats. They were the preferred cats of ship's captains aboard their ships uh, for a couple of different reasons. One, the ship's captains thought that extra digit made them better mousers. And with mm -hmm. the rodent problems on ships, it helped alleviate that. Uh, having an extra digit was definitely an advantage to catching rats. <laughs> but there's a legend about them having mystical and magical powers. Mm -hmm. Ships captains thought they would give them calm seas, prevailing winds, and safe passages on their journeys. Mm -hmm. And so being superstitious, they liked having these gypsy cats, as they were called, mm -hmm. on their ships. Hemingway heard about this folklore legend in the story mm -hmm. and voiced an opinion that, gosh, I'd like to have one of those six-toed cats. His boys, Patrick and Gregory, were running errands on the ship's dock in Key West Harbor one day. And after being paid the monetary agreed amount for running the errands, the ship's captain said, you're Hemingway's sons, aren't you? I said, yes, sir. He goes, I got a bonus for you today, for your father. Mm -hmm. And he handed them a big, white, fluffy, white cat with six toes. They took the cat home, gave it to their dad, Papa, mm -hmm. and they named it Snowball. Mm -hmm. And as the legend goes, one cat leads to another. <laughs> and today we have about 44 cats on the property. Wow. Do you know how many cats he had during his time here? They say he had about 50 cats 50. total when he was in Key West and up mm -hmm. to 90 to 100 when he moved to Cuba. Wow. So he was a cat lover for Very sure. Very much a cat <laughs> lover. Oh, yeah. All right, Dave. What would you say is the most fascinating thing about Ernest Hemingway? I'd say it's the continued and perpetual popularity of a man who wrote basically in the 1930s and 40s, last major novel, 1952, Old Man of the Sea. And 60 years later, he's as popular as ever. Mm -hmm. We have a, a sort of a image of him in our minds there at the home. And, and we know, like with anyone, any major movie star, writer, or director, 
you have your moment in time where you're uh, popular, you're in, you're in the know, you're on the mm -hmm. screen. And as with all good things, it would tend to seem to fade after mm -hmm. a period of years and especially after decades. Right. We keep enjoying the popularity of his writing, his times here in the home, but we keep thinking there'll come a day where it's going to diminish. And every mm -hmm. year, just when we think mm -hmm. this man is going to depopularize, another book comes out, another movie comes out. You know, two years ago we thought, okay, it'll start to diminish, and Midnight in Paris came out. Mm -hmm. This year we thought it was going to diminish, and lo and behold, Gellhorn and Hemingway on HBO came out. Every time we think he's going to diminish, another book is written. Recently, Hemingway's Girl, about the cleaning staff in the Hemingway home. Mm -hmm. Andy Garcia right now has purchased a Wheeler boat, is going to refurbish it to look exactly like the Pilar, mm -hmm. and film a movie. Andy Garcia will play Gregorio Fuentes, the old man in the sea. Mm -hmm. uh, Annette Benning will be his wife, Mary and Anthony Hopkins will be Ernest Hemingway. It should be a great movie, oh, that probably airing 213, 214 sometime. Okay, so it, it's never, I don't think it is ever going to die. No, it's, it's <laughs> just enjoyable to watch the front gate. We open the gate every morning. Mm -hmm. Sometimes there's a line of 20, 30 people just waiting to buy that ticket and get mm -hmm. in and relive the story of Ernest Hemingway and mm -hmm. see where he actually wrote, raised his family, ate his dinner, and produced 70% of his lifetime works in that brief 10-year period. Mm -hmm. was all at the Ernest Hemingway Home and Museum, which is open to the public, right? We're open <laughs> 9 to 5, mm -hmm. 365 days a year, mm -hmm. except for hurricanes. <laughs> we close for one day for Isaac. Okay. And uh, we do tours every 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. Tours last about a half an hour. But with the bookstore and the grounds and gardens and the cats, we would say allocate about an hour to do the museum properly and take your time and walk away with some great photos. Mm -hmm. oh, I can imagine. And any questions, you can call the number that you see on the bottom of the screen. Thank you, Dave, for sharing this, all oh, this you're information You're very welcome. It's our pleasure to be here. I'm going to take a quick break right now, but I'll be right back after this. Stay with me.